Rx Television on RxMuscle.com. This is Ask Dave, better known as Hashtag Ask Dave, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit SpeciesNutrition.com. I'm your host, Sadiq Faruqi. This is your 30-minute question and answer show with Dave Palumbo. All your questions on diet, training, supplementation, IFBB pros, competitions. You can have questions about this past weekend's Arnold Classic Australia won by Willie Winkler. That and everything else is all on the table. As we now bring in Dave Palumbo. Dave, a lot of great content right now on RxMuscle.com and the YouTube channel. Right now, we have a special episode of Iron Debate between Boston Lloyd and Amin Alai. Then yesterday, your interview with Kevin Lavroni, where he stripped down and showed you what he had. And then before that, earlier in the day, a rant on the evolution of Rudy Winkler. Yeah, it was a big day yesterday in uh, RX Muscle Land, that's for sure. We had a lot of uh, good content. Um, you know, you, when we were planning the week, you and I always call each other up and we plan what, who we're going to get for the week and everything like that. And you said, get Lavroni. I said, well, you know, maybe he's, maybe, let me give him a week to cool down. You know, I don't know. He just competed. He didn't do that well. Uh, I don't want to, you know, pressure him. And, and then, he, like, maybe the next day he texted me. He's like, bro, I'm back in, in Mar from Maryland. I'm back in Maryland. Let's, uh, when are we going to do this interview? I'm like, all right, let's do it today. You know, I, <laughs> and so we got him on there and he looked, he was sitting like in a sleeveless shirt and I'm like, you look freaking really good. He's like, yeah. And he, he's like, he got up and he took his headphones off and he starts posing, hitting a couple poses and the whole show he was doing, it was great. And so, you know, he really looked good. He looked way better than he did at the show. And then he told us, obviously went through the whole thing of what happened and what he did and didn't do. And I thought it was a very revealing interview. And it really kind of, he kind of bared his soul to me. And I thought that, that those are the interviews that really get a lot of traction and people really can relate to. Uh, because he wasn't just trying to sell us a product. He wasn't trying to like create a mystique. He was like, all right, this is who I am. This is what I did. And, you know, love me or hate me, I don't care. You know, and I think that that's, that's why people really are, are resonating with this interview a lot. So that and a whole lot more right now on rxmuscle.com and the YouTube channel. Let's go to the questions. First, we go to Haymakers Only. Dave, thanks for the great content and free information. My question is about darn sciatica. I train really heavy for just about every muscle group. Would you recommend I continue to train past the discomfort caused by sciatica? Not sure if that'll aggravate it even more. Well, you know, my, my theory on, on training with injuries is if you can, if you can train around the injury and you're not making the injury worse, then, then, then that's fine. But if, you're, if you have a sciatic pain, which is basically some kind of impingement on that sciatic nerve that comes out of your glute muscle, you know, if, that's, if it's getting worse because of what you're doing, then that's not solving any problems. Also, if you're training and it's not allowing that whatever's you know, causing this thing to be inflamed to go down, then you're just, you're, you're just keeping an injury. Now, I, I was getting a, a sciatic pain. It wasn't going down my leg. It was just coming right out of my left glute. And it was, it was from holding my son and carrying him up and down the stairs all the time. And for some reason, I must have kinked it off. And it was driving me nuts. And I, there was nothing I could do. It, it was just like, I was like paralyzed from it. It wasn't, you know, I wasn't having radiating pain from it. It was just driving me nuts. And I said, you know, I'm just not going to do anything for two days. Stop trying to like, I, I stopped trying to stretch and, and do all the things that I thought, you know, logically would work. And I did the illogical, which was nothing, you know. And in two days, it got better and I was fine. So... Sometimes you got to just say not do nothing, but if you have an injury that just, you know, that needs a little, you know, tender love, give it that, but train around the injury. Jacob Fiato, CBD and bodybuilding. You know, I was, I've been talking about that a lot. There's, um, and I've been ex experimenting and, you know, looking into these cannabinoids that they sell. Cannabinoids are like naturally occurring uh, substances in, in the marijuana plant, you know, the, and obviously people smoke marijuana not because of the cannabinoids, they, most people smoke it because they want to get high from the, the THC drug in there. However, these cannabinoids bind to cannabinoid receptors in our brain, which is interesting that we have them. So obviously if we have cannabinoid receptors, it, it's because of the fact that we can take in cannabinoids and we probably produce some nat natural endogenous ones as well. But when you can, when, what they can do now is they can separate the drug, the THC, off and leave the cannabinoids behind. And when you ingest these, whether you eat them or you put them under your tongue, uh, I've actually even had someone send me a little e, like one of these little e-cigarettes. You can actually inhale the stuff through a little cartridge. 
and I've tried them. And, you know, they do make you feel a little relaxed. Um, I did too much the, on, the, on the inhaling one the first time I got it, and I got a little nauseous from it. And I, and I contacted the person, and they, and they told me that, that can happen. Uh, but if you do one or two, like, little puffs, or you put one, I have another thing where you squirt it under your tongue, it definitely works. You know, it, it works better if you're in pain, I notice, if we're in discomfort. It seems to, to, to ease your, your uh, suffering a little bit. When, you, when I feel good and I, nothing bothers me, if I do it, it actually makes me feel a little slow. Um, so, once again, if people are, have high anxiety, if they have trouble relaxing, if they have a nagging injury that's irritating them, and you know, when you have pain, it, it drives you crazy. You start getting irritable. That's what I think they work really well with. Is it compatible with bodybuilding? Absolutely, because I don't think it does anything negative. Um, once again, I don't think it's one of these things you should be constantly doing if you don't need it. But if you do need it and you want to help you, you know, recover, I certainly wouldn't do it before I trained, but I would definitely maybe do it after my train, keep cortisol levels low, and, and to help you recover. Once again, I've tried a million different versions of it, of the cannabinoids, from pills to uh, sublinguals to the, the inhaling one. They're all different. I think the one I inhaled was the best, and the second best was the oil I dropped under my tongue. And these were both, these were both pharmaceutical um, versions. They came from like drug companies almost that sent me samples. So there is a difference between different kinds that come out there. I still am out, I'm still haven't developed an exact protocol as to how I think you can best use it, but I'll keep you guys updated. Cameron Coates, what is the best way to get lipids back in healthy range post cycle, primarily HDL cholesterol? I'm 16 weeks off everything, and my HDL is still low. Cycle consisted of tests and winstrol. I know Winnie is the culprit. You know, I have a theory about, about these cholesterol carriers, which is what they are. LDLs are low-density lipoprotein carriers. HDLs are high-density lipoprotein carriers. The LDLs are basically, if you have too many of them, they deposit cholesterol in the, in, in the blood vessels, okay, in the organs, which can, you know, create blockages. The HDLs are like the vacuum cleaner cholesterol carriers. They suck up all the rogue, electro, all the rogue uh, cholesterol that's left around the body. So they're good. So you want high HDLs, you want low LDLs. I think that steroids skew the test. Now, I don't think that by lowering HDLs, which is what steroids do, the good, the good cholesterol carriers, I don't think you necessarily are at a higher risk. I really don't. I think it's skewing the results similar to the way steroids screw up. You know, when you try to test for liver enzymes, you get high readings because they're really just muscle enzymes. I think it's one of these tests that gets screwed up, and I don't necessarily think you're at a, at a higher risk for heart disease because of that. That's my new theory. What I think is important is that your LDLs, the bad cholesterol carriers, need to be in normal range. I think a lot of guys have high LDLs, and I think that that's the problem. I always had very low HDLs when I took steroids, just like everyone else. But I always had low LDLs, too, because I, just, I, don't eat, I didn't eat a lot of bad you know, sugary foods and things, and I don't have a, a family predisposition for that. So my LDLs were always in range, and that's why when I went for a cardiac catheterization, I had clear coronary arteries. So once again, if you keep your LDLs under control, and the best way to do that would be to take in good essential fats, like a product like Omegalyze, which has your fish oil at three grams a day, your evening primrose oil, 2,600 milligrams a day, uh, omega-7 fat, palmitoic acid, okay, that's all in, in Omegalyze. If you take in your monounsaturated fats, which are your heart healthy fats, like macadamia nut oil, okay, there's really no extra virgin olive oil that I even trust anymore on the market. So mac oil is great. I make a brand of that from Species Nutrition, but if you take three tablespoons of that a day, you're gonna have good, you're gonna have good low LDL levels in your body. If you don't overeat sugar, also that's really important. If you take a fiber supplement, that lowers LDL. The whole key is keeping the LDLs low. Don't worry about the HDLs. They're going to go down when you're on steroids. I don't think it has anything to do with increasing risk of heart disease. I know people are going to say I'm crazy. I'm telling you. Because when I went off steroids, all my HDLs went back to normal. And I, I don't think it changed anything in my body. So once again, can you really raise HDLs while on steroids? I don't think you can. People say take niacin. Um, I, I see people use it. I don't think it really raises their HDLs very much. I think it's just one of these weird skewed side effects of taking anabolics. Jason, since 77, Dave at the age of 50, though Kevin Lebroni did extremely well with his comeback. Do you believe that he could have gotten better results with his legs 
with more of a Tom Platts approach during super high reps with less but still heavy weights versus his old style of super heavy, low reps. And again, that interview right now for yesterday on RxMuscle.com and the YouTube channel. Lavroni was always a, a heavy weight, high intensity training type of guy. Uh, that's just the way he bought his body responds, you know, and that's the way most bodies respond. If you lift heavy weights, you build muscle. Now, I don't know, you know, what Kevin has going on. He did say he injured his quad, uh, his right quad while he was training. He was doing like 550 pound squats. I don't even know how he was doing those. So he was obviously lifting good weight. He got, you know, I really do believe if Kevin continued from here, his legs would get a little better. I don't think they're ever going to be the Lavroni legs of, of, of years past. I, I think he's, he, he does have some injuries that he's not really admitting to. You know, where maybe his knees got some inflammation. I know he had gotten some PRP in there. But, you know, you're always gun shy when you have injuries in your legs to, to really push, push, push. Uh, I think his legs can get better if he really wanted to. I don't, he, from the interview, he said he wasn't going to compete anymore. Um, but once again, you know, for some reason, when guys get into their 40s and 50s, we have trouble building legs. I don't know what it is. There's just something weird about it. Uh, I know back in the day, Lavroni would look at a squat and his legs would grow. So... Uh, I don't think his training technique is wrong because he knows what works for his body. I just think he's he's older and it, his body's just not responding as well as it did when he was younger. So gut feeling in yes or no, is Kevin Lavroni ever going to take stage again on a pro show? You know, Kevin told me that he's done, but I, I, with Kevin, I never say never. You know, he's looking so good now. You never know. I almost talked him into doing the New York Pro on, on the interview. So, <laughs> you know. Who knows? You know, Kevin, when he's 60, might say, I want to prove to the world that I can still look good at 60. You don't know with Kevin, you know. They could have a, a men's 60 and over Olympia in, in 10 years for all we know, you know. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say Kevin will never be on stage again, but there's a good chance that he probably won't. Jay Hasley, your view on Stan Efferding's approach to cardio with shorter intervals spread through the day. He recommends 10-minute walks after meals opposed to one long duration of cardio. Well, I mean, if you're doing cardio just to burn fat, theoretically, what he, what he said would work. But who the hell has the time all day long to be doing 10 minutes of cardio here, 10 minutes of cardio there? You know, I just don't, I don't think it's practical for most people. Now, if you don't have a job, maybe it's – but most people would rather just get it over with, you know. If you got to do 30 minutes a day, just bang 30 minutes out a day. Why would you want to do three 10-minute sessions? But like I said, if you're looking to just burn calories – theoretically it would work whereas you know where most people who are looking to you know get a cardiovascular effect from some of the cardio they're doing then you want to do you want to do like a 20 minute to 30 minute duration in, in, in continuum so theoretically it would work practically I don't know how many people actually do that question from Aids McNiz now we've gotten questions about this before but not sure when's the last time you talked about it but he uh, found a really old video of you and Kai Green and you're at his apartment, you brought some of his groceries and you saw him work out. What was that like? And he said he was painting some uh, cool, interesting art. So talk about that video from uh, back in the day. Yeah, you know, uh, when I was working for Muscular Development, um, I, I came up with this idea that, hey, we should go see Kai Green in his element where he lives and see how he prepares. This is when Kai was just coming on the pro scene and really, I think he had just won a pro show or something like that. I, or maybe two pro shows at that point. So Bill Comstack, who was the, the, our videographer and photographer at the time, you know, flew out from California to New York, and then I drove him in my car uh, t to Brooklyn in my Mercedes, and we uh, we parked out there and we we showed where Kai Green lived, which was kind of in the projects at the time. Uh, it was rent controlled apartment, you know, and he uh, it was it was real, you know, it was it was very raw. It was, you got a real idea of, you know, Kai Green. You know, this is the guy, the Kai Green who had no money. He couldn't pay his cell phone. His cell phone was shut off because it wasn't a priority, you know. And uh, I took him to the grocery store and I, pay, I, said, I said, Bill, let's, let's pay for his groceries, you know. Uh, I said, Kai, I'm paying. And he was like so thrilled. He, he went back and he started grabbing more fish and stuff like that. We probably bought 30 pounds of fish in, in that one uh, time. But we got to see where he, he worked. You know, his, his apartment had no air conditioning. It was like swelteringly hot. And... It was real. He had his paintings there. And, you know, I think a lot of people copied that same protocol and they tried to get him to go back to that apartment because he had kept it, I think, for one of his relatives. Uh, but we had it. Re it was real because he was really living there at the time. And uh, it was fun. You know, I, I knew Kai, you know, for probably 10 years prior to that already. So I, I kind of knew what he was all about. I knew his story. 
But I knew a lot of people out there didn't know his story, and I think that's why it was so popular, because it gave you an insight into where Kai Green came from. Classic Sibley, best way to grow the outer sweep. You know, people have been saying, you know, saying for years, if you want to get more sweep to your quads, you should do close stance squats, you know, or, or leg presses, and you get more sweep. And I, I say foo-foo to that. I really, first of all, whenever I would do close grip, I would always, my knees would always kill me. Because it's not really a, a natural movement to, to, to squat down with your knees, you know, pointing forward. Natural is to open up your stance. So when you squat down, your knees flare open. And that gives you the ability to stimulate the adductors inside and the glute muscles. So I found that when I would go slightly wider stance and open my knees up and come down lower, that I was engaging, number one, the glutes and, and inner thighs, but I also engaged more of that outer vastus lateralis muscle, which is what creates sweep. And in my legs, at least, that grew not only, it grew, grew my entire leg. And when you grow more adductor or inner thigh, it makes the sweep look bigger because now the leg is girthier. I think a lot of guys actually have good quads, and then they think, and then their leg, but their legs are just not big enough, and it's because they're missing that inner adductor area, and it's because they don't open their stance up enough. Client at 34, Dave, why do some, and he puts it in quotes, coaches, think distilled water makes you drier? Well, it does initially, but, it, but what it does is because there's no minerals in distilled water. When you drink it, it pulls all the minerals out of your body. Uh, so ultimately, you do dry out initially because you're, 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 when you lose minerals, you, you lose water with it. But the problem is then you become dehydrated, okay, and then you become electrolyte depleted and you start cramping and it's very hard to, to recover from that. So to me, if, you don't, if you're not drinking distilled, no one drinks really distilled water. If you're not drinking distilled water the whole diet, don't put it in at the very end. That's stupid. You're going to completely dehydrate yourself and electrolyte deprive yourself. And then you're not going to even know what you're missing. Because who knows if, you, if you're losing too much sodium or too much potassium, you know, too much calcium. It's, it's, a, it's a very foolish thing to do. You never change things at the last minute. Simon, to care, can you give us a rough idea of how much protein you should consume for muscle gains? And while on a cut, do you require more protein uh, da, 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 when enhanced versus natural? Well, I, I kind of missed the question. So what does he want to know while enhanced versus natural? Sorry? What does he want to know? No, no, he wants to know how much protein you should be consuming oh. for muscle gains or on a cut, and you prefer more protein or require more protein when enhanced versus natural. You know what? The, the diet is the same for people on steroids or not on steroids. Steroids just make everything work better and make you recover faster. That's the bottom line. The, the nutrition and, and supplementation doesn't change. And I've told this to people over and over and over again. That's why when natural guys come to me, they're like, hey, Dave, do you do natural diets? I'm like, it's the same diet. <laughs> guys on steroids just respond better because they have, they have an added you know, crutch, so to speak, an extra tool in their tool chest, so to speak. And so to me, it's the same diet. Now, how much protein do you need? Usually I give a gram and a half per pound of, of, of body weight in the off season for protein. Around contest time, I do about one to one and a quarter grams of protein. And you gotta play with that amount. Some guys need more, some guys need less. I'm just giving you a, a, a general you know, type of rule of thumb. Usually protein and fat doesn't really change that much from pre-contest to off season. It's the carb content that really changes a lot. However, in a lot of guys, they need more, uh, way more protein and way more fat in the off-season because they have a fast metabolism. Uh, and obviously, you can't give too much fat and protein pre-contest so you won't lose weight because it's too many calories. So uh, that's how I play around with that. We're going to step aside when we return. More Ask Dave brought to you by Species Nutrition on rxmuscle.com. muscle.com brought to you by speciesnutrition.com. We wanted to give a shout out to a couple of the stores that carry us. One is Supzilla. They're in Fort Myers, Florida. And I think it was a couple of weeks ago, Dave, you actually gave a product demonstration. Why don't you tell the folks a little bit more about Subzilla in Fort Myers, Florida? 
Yeah, Carrie who owns the store is uh, terrific. He contacted me. He's like, Dave, I want to carry your supplements. You know, we have the same color scheme. He, got, he said, we're right in your backyard now. I said, absolutely. You know, when I was in New York, you know, all the stores, they carried my stuff because I was there. I would go into the stores. You know, now that I'm in Florida, I'm, I'm trying to make, establish new contacts. And, you know, a lot of the stores are starting to carry the products now here. And uh, I was in the store obviously doing some, uh, uh, I guess you could say, uh, product education for people. And, you know, people were loving it. And I think it's just, a, there's a learning curve, obviously. And so I'm always trying to educate, 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 educate. And the great thing about carrying the store over there at Subzilla is that they're educators. So when you go into the store, they're not just selling you stuff. They don't have some dumb kid behind the counter. They have knowledgeable people who can explain how the products work. So if you're in that Fort, this Fort Myers area, say so Cape Coral area, even as far as Naples or, you know, Port Charlotte, come down to the store. They're really, really helpful over there and, uh, and they'll, they'll get you hooked up with some good pricing on that. So guys, I appreciate you carrying the product. The other store we wanted to give a shout out to is Kauai Supplements. I'm going to butcher the name. It's in Hawaii, it's a city called Lihu or Lihue. Uh, I'm sure we're going to get an email later on, but Kauai Supplements. Dave, you always talk about the loyalty behind some of the uh, vendors that carry the product, they believe in the product. Kauai Supplements, not only a longtime uh, retailer of speciesnutrition.com, but one of the more vocal ones. They're constantly posting, you know, uh, Instagram content, social media content related to the species product line of nutrition. You know, who would think in Hawaii that, you know, that we would be so big, but they, they, they sell a lot of our supplements there, and I want to thank them for that because. You know what? It, it's tough sometimes with the, the Hawaiian, you know, it's cost a lot of money to send over to Hawaii, obviously. So that raises the price. Everything in Hawaii is more expensive. Anyone who's ever been there will know that. But obviously they really value a high quality supplement line. And, and once again, I support them fully. And, you know, we have a great relationship with them and they really have a loyal customer base there. So I want to just send out a personal uh, thank you and congratulations. And you can follow them at Kauai Supplements on Instagram. If you happen to be in Hawaii, ask for Ashford Rita at Kauai Supplements. Go back to the questions. Janoy the Goy, Dave, how to prevent or minimize hair loss when running gear? And which gear would you say is the least damaging to hair? You know, here's my take on the whole thing. It's hard to avoid, you know, losing. If, you have, if you're prone to losing your hair, Okay, taking gear is going to definitely accelerate that. There's no doubt about that. If you're not prone to losing hair, taking gear won't make you lose hair. I mean, look at Jay Cutler. He hasn't, the guy hasn't lost a hair on his head. He's un unbelievable. So it, there is a huge genetic component to it. Now, people who are genetically pre-inclined to lose hair will lose it faster if they have very high DHT levels in their body. So we want to limit DHT. Now, a lot of guys don't want to get rid of too much DHT because it, they, they find it could affect their sex drive if it gets too low or, you know, their ability to build muscle. So, what my first line of defense against hair loss is, is my product Testolize because Testolize just balances the ratio of testosterone to DHT to estrogen. You want it in the right ratio, okay? So, it lowers DHT a little bit, keeps it in that normal low range. It doesn't eliminate it totally. So that's going to be the first line of defense. And for most people, that works really well. Three pills twice a day. For people who have severe hair loss, who want to try to stop it, okay, um, you can use finasteride. I, I used finasteride, you know, I've been using it for 15 years, 2.5 milligrams a day. I also take the testolize just, just to play it safe on top of that. I don't have any side effects from it that I know. It's, I don't have a reduced sex drive from it. But a lot of people respond differently to it. I found when I took one milligram, it wasn't as potent at making me stop losing my hair. 2.5 milligrams of it seems to keep me in the, lo in the low normal DHT level range. And that's exactly what I want. And at this point, at this my age, it's actually good probably for my prostate too to keep the DHT levels in the, in the normal low range. I don't want to go below normal low because then I'm going to have sexual side effects. So you want to keep it in that low normal range. For most people, like I said, taking Testolize will do that. Okay, if not, like I said, and you're an extreme case, you know, and you're really paranoid about hair loss, you can try the finasteride. Interesting question here by Rob Nerland, fit about classic physique. If they change the rules of classic physique to now include all the mandatory poses in bodybuilding except uh, most muscular, would that affect who would be winning? Which body types would benefit from including all the poses? I, any specific pros come to mind that you think it'll help or hurt? I don't think it'll hurt anyone. I think it'll help everyone. 
I think uh, it's bodybuilding. It's just, it's just, there's just a weight restriction on it. So I mean, it's it's classic bodybuilding. They're looking for a certain look of a physique, okay? And why should hitting certain poses pre preclude those? I don't understand that. You know, I don't know how that one can affect the other. Give them all the poses. It's bodybuilding. I don't understand why, you know, a side tricep is not a, is not a pose that classic physique should be doing. The, all these guys hit it in their routine anyway. So. It was like women's bodybuilding. They weren't giving them lat spreads to do originally. And, and everyone was like, why is there no lat spread? You know, and well, women can't develop lats. Well, what era are you guys living in? So they put the lat spread back in. But I think the classic men should hit all the poses. Absolutely. And you know what? If you don't want to do a most muscular and you want to do your best favorite classic pose, that's fine. Because for your favorite classic pose, you can hit a most muscular anyway. Um, so yeah, I, I think they should definitely put all the poses in. Danny Ipsis, Dave, your thoughts on dropping tests to a lower dosage or nothing at all while increasing the hardening drugs two weeks out from a show? Um, you know, I don't think it's going to do that much. Um, I usually stop testosterone like about three days or four days out from a show, which is really not doing very much, but maybe maybe curtailing a little water retention. Um, there's not much you can really screw up, except some guys try to stop all the drugs right before. Um, my theory is if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you look good on what you're doing, just keep doing the same thing. Hoodman521, Dave, does adding mac nut oil to isolate slow digestion through the night like casein advertises? Absolutely. I've talked about this before. Adding fats to any protein source is going to slow the absorption. Not the digestion, the absorption, because it takes longer for your body to absorb the food, because fats slow the transit of food through the intestinal tract. So yeah, I usually recommend people do a whey isolate, like isolize with all natural peanut butter before bed, or if you just want to make it easier, you don't have to turn the blender on, you can just put a tablespoon or two of macadamia oil into the uh, isolize and mix that up and drink that as well. And yes, you'll create like almost like a time release type protein from it. Question about Akeem Williams from Caleb Grits. Is Akeem going to compete at all this year, or is he going to take the year off and make improvements? I thought he was supposed to do the Arnold Australia. Yeah, I know. I don't I don't know. What, I should have texted him because I forgot he was supposed to do Arnold Australia. I don't know where, what, why he bowed out of it. He, I think he's definitely going to compete this year. I'll have to reach out to him and, and confirm that. But I just don't know where he's going to be. Maybe he's going to do the indie show coming up. I don't know. Uh, Probably, I have, if I had a bet, I'd, see, I'd say he's going to do New York Pro. Um, that's probably where we'll see him next. But he's looking freaky, so uh, I think whatever show he picks, he's going to be very dangerous. Phil Killerin, how do you know if you are consuming too much protein, and how do you know if you're consuming not enough protein? Are there any telltale signs? Well, if you're doing too much, a lot of times you can smell like an ammonia smell coming off your body. It's like you're overwhelming your body. I, I knew a guy who would, he would drink like 100 gram whey isolate shakes all throughout the day in addition to all his food. And he, he had the worst, it wasn't like a bad breath, but it was the worst odor coming out of his body. Just total ammonia. Um, if you're not eating enough protein, you just won't grow. You know, you won't recover. You'll notice that you're, you're not gaining muscle. You might even be losing muscle. In which case, if you put restore or up the protein intake, you usually reverse that situation. Chez USMC, your opinion on taking testosterone sub-Q instead of intramuscularly? I've been reading many TRT clinics prescribing tests sub-Q saying more of the hormone is absorbed. I don't believe that. The, the intramuscular and subcutaneous routes are both pretty uh, comparable. Um, for water-based stuff, the subcutaneous route is pretty easy because it kind of gets in real easy. The, the injectable, I mean, oil-based route, I, I just don't, you know, I know that I, when I would take shots, sometimes I would miss the muscle or I'd go too shallow and it would get onto the skin. It was just irritating. It, may, it got all red. I wouldn't do any subcutaneous shots of steroid, you know, oil-based steroids. I would do completely 100% intramuscular. Guys have been doing it for, for 100 years already, or 70 years, whatever it's been, they've been taking steroids, and, and no one has had to change anything. People realize that the intramuscular shots are, are work fine, so I don't know why people are always trying to create some new crazy way of doing things. I just don't buy it. I'd say stick to intramuscular. Take one more question from Lord of Phantasms. Dave went on a keto diet. How does ketogenesis work in regards to energy expenditure on high intensity cardio sessions and can the body utilize body fat for those short bursts of intense trainings? Would it be beneficial to have some kind of MCT oils before since they're broken down much faster as an energy source? 
High intensity cardio or high intensity weight training, okay, which is what all weight training is essentially, uses carbohydrates as a fuel source. We all, even on a ketogenic diet, we still always have some glycogen inside the muscle. We just don't have a lot of it. The muscles are depleted, okay? So you don't want to be exercising at high intensity for long, long periods of time. However, if you're doing short bursts of, of, of high intensity activity, the glycogen inside your muscle is going to be liberated and used as a fuel source. And that's fine. You know, your body doesn't have to eat carbs to actually store, you know, to store, you know, glycogen. Your body can do two things. It can convert amino acids into glucose, which then gets stored as glycogen, which happens all the time, gluconeogenesis in the liver. And your body can also store, can create amino acids and turn them right into glycogen either. A lot of people don't realize that. The body doesn't even have to go from glycogen to glucose to, to glycogen. It can go from amino acids directly into glycogen. Dr. Scott Conley, who's like one of the premier, you know, uh, researchers, I guess you could say, on protein metabolism, he told me that. So it's incredible. The body is very resilient. And there's, like I said, there's always glycogen storage inside the muscle, even on a no-carb diet. And that's what your body will use when you're doing high-intensity activity. I kind of sort of lied. It's got a quick question, a quick answer on this one. We're getting a couple of people asking it, I guess, based off the Kevin Lavroni interview. Physique 85, Dave, your thoughts on bringing back the Masters Olympia? Um, I, I, I liked it. I thought it was a cool show. I thought it was uh, exciting, you know. Dexter will win it, probably. <laughs> I, no one will ever be able to beat Dexter in that show, I don't think. But, you know, I think it was a good show. I think the problem with it was that it, the, the, I guess the name Masters Olympia is owned by AMI, I guess, and it's very expensive to sanction those shows, so no one wants to hold it because it's too expensive to buy the name. But I thought it was a great idea. I liked it when they held it. I actually like when they don't hold it every year. I would almost like prefer to see it done every, almost like the Olympics, like every two or three years. I think that makes it more exciting even. But, you know, maybe it'll happen again. It's, it's still always available if someone wants to pay the bucks to, to get that sanction. That is going to do for this episode of Ask Dave, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. Reminder, right now on rxmuscle.com, and the YouTube channel, Iron Debate, Boston Lloyd, Amin Ali from yesterday, live with Kevin Lavroni, with Kevin Lavroni posing on camera, and then Dave's analysis on the evolution of Willie Winkler. For our producer, Tyler Shore and Dave Lupo, I'm Sadiq Faruqi. We'll see you next week.